Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today with my brother to talk about, what are we talking about? Uh, the First Law Trilogy. That's right, the First Law Trilogy. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll be super shocked to see me talking about Abercrombie books. <laughs> so I think if there was ever any doubt that we were related, I think this confirms that we might be related because we both really like these books, right? A lot of people do, right? <laughs> Everyone is my family, my Abercrombie family. <laughs> So why did you uh, decide to read these books? Gifted the first one to me. How long ago? <laughs> it's been a while. So why did you decide randomly now to pick it up? You talked about it a lot and uh, <laughs> saw it sitting on my shelf. So you're saying in real life I'm the same as I am on my channel, I just talk about Abercrombie all the time? <laughs> <laughs> you can say yes, it's no, fine, it's not a trap. Mm -hmm. So you kind of like binge read them, huh? Because like you texted me that you read The Blade itself. And you were like, well, you didn't give it to me before they were hanged, so I guess I'll just read Red Rising, and then next time I talk to you, you're like, oh, I got it on my Kindle. Uh, I was a little disappointed that the first one felt inconclusive, but uh, I was interested to learn more. So I got the next one from <laughs> the Kindle you got me. And then did Before They Were Hanged feel even more inconclusive? No, I felt like, well, I, maybe because I was sort of expecting it that time. Yeah, I was less displeased with the... <laughs> I know you don't use like Goodreads or anything, but if you were, if you had been like giving star ratings to them, one out of five or one to five, as you were going, how like would you have rated them? Uh, I'd probably give the first one a four. I only had minor issues, and then it's, the pacing was not that great. And then, like I said, I like to have conclusive and somewhat conclusive endings. Even if it's the beginning of a series, you want it to have a conclusive ending. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, All the answers, don't need to read book two. <laughs> no, that's not it, but it just felt like it kind of ended in the middle of things. Most people point. say that, and even I thought that. Yeah. I'm just yanking your chain. <laughs> I gave it four stars the first time I read it, and I gave it five when I reread it. Because like you said, so like jumping way ahead in time now, after you finished the trilogy, you were like, oh shit, like this was like actually all planned out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I was really impressed. Oh yeah, th this and video then... will have spoilers. We're not trying to avoid spoilers, so go ahead. Oh yeah, I was, I was just really impressed with uh, all the things I could remember that were probably, well, that were clues and... Like, which thing were you the most like, oh, like, I need to look for that when I reread it? Pretty much everything Baez did. Yeah. So for me, like, I remember, I think one of the, the main things that I was like, oh, I'm, I need to, like, go back and look for that, or, like, I probably will keep an eye out for that was Malika's Kwai, like when it yeah. stopped being Malika's Kwai. It was very noticeable when they left. Well, he kept mentioning that he was much less, I guess, chipper and stuff <laughs> than before. But also he like knew the answers to questions now. He wasn't like a complete dunce. Right, yeah, it was definitely something fishy there. But of course, like when the first time you're reading it, there, you don't expect that he's not him. Yeah. <laughs> when they first revealed that there's shape-shifting, or when he first revealed that there's some shape-shifting magic i was a little disappointed it felt like a bit of a easy yeah i was gonna yeah but at the same time because he doesn't overuse it but right and then it's definitely planned for i guess yeah but. and all the times that a character notes that someone they're talking to has two different color eyes and you know that you were sold for i was trying to remember who the person with two different colored eyes was later and then figured that would come up <laughs> <laughs> yep it did so i know i keep saying that glock is my favorite character who was your favorite character yeah, that's mine as well. It's interesting, all, all kinds of conflicting motivation and such. And such. I mean, it's interesting to see, a, like, the idea of following from that perspective is not usually a perspective in a book. Like, he might be a character in a book, oh, but it's yeah. not going to be the one that He's you're... He's definitely not a good guy. But not just that, because, like, there's often bad guys you follow, but it's not mm -hmm. usually, like, the crippled torturer. He would just be, like, that creepy dude that's, like, also there to, like, round out the villainous image of the baddies, you know? Yeah. Being in his head is a joy. <laughs> well, it gets a little old sometimes hearing him repeat himself uh, how much he's suffering. <laughs> he's suffering that, a lot, though. But like you said before, maybe it's, it could have to do with me reading all the books back to back. Well, there's a lot, I, mean, I feel like in general, when I read series back to back, like there's a lot of things an author will do to like help you remember that this is the thing. But if you've just read it, you're like, I know that's the thing. But you're like, if I was reading these as they were coming out, that would be like quite helpful. <laughs> I learned that all of his expectations were always wrong. Not always. Well, generally. If he'd be going to meet Salt or something, he'd Oh, in that sense, yeah. But I mean, like, when he was piecing mysteries together, like, on his own in his head, thinking about who's behind what, he was often kind of on the right track. Yeah, sure. So I thought that I was I just meant, like, more expectations in the moment for oh, what's yeah. immediately going to happen. He talks to West in the first book and, like, finds out that he did try to visit him. 
and that his mom had mm-hmm. turned him away. Like, that's a moment where, like, for one of the rare moments where Glock is, like, caught, like, not being snotty and, like, snide, where he's just like, oh, I did have a friend. Oh, yeah. okay, this is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> it was, like, kind of sweet, too. And then I love that he and Artie end up being, like, a Yeah, thing. that was interesting. And I like that it kind of happened over time. It wasn't like at the last minute, our Artie was like, I pity the cripple and I'll be here. Like, they actually like had a building friendship that over time sure. you'd see like, actually like they could have a good, pretty good life together. Mm-hmm. Almost like flirting sometimes the way that she'd like, oh, well, I'm just like a, such a cultured lady. And he's like, and I'm the dashing hero. Yeah. <laughs> They're like hilarious together. Yeah. So I don't know if you know, or if I've told you, or if you figured it out, but like one of the main characters in the new trilogy is Savine Dan Glockta, their daughter. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't know. I was excited about seeing that when I heard that she was in it. Hmm. Yeah. So he. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's obviously. Oh not no! Wait, that's uh. It's that's, Giselle's. Yeah. yeah. I was just. But she was raised by Glockta, hmm. nurture over nature. See a character in the. Yeah. In the you get to yeah. see him, Daddy Glockta. I mean, she's like thirty years old because this happens like thirty years later. Well, he's still head of the. Inquisition. Oh. Mm-hmm. And so, like, uh, so yeah, so the characters that you like now know who they are. Savine is obviously Glockta and Artie's daughter. The prince, Duke uh, Orso, who's now Giselle and... and uh, Sorry, Therese? Therese, yeah. their uh, oldest kid. The dog man's daughter. He has a daughter? No, but in between from when the series ends and when the new one begins, he has a kid. So she's pretty... She's like 20. I don't know if there's anyone else that either you would know about or that wouldn't be a spoiler spoiler for the standalones to tell you that they're in it. But any these. Um, also in Sharp Ends, the short story collection, you, there's two short stories that I think would be of interest to you. Now having read the trilogy, one is seeing the Luddy Nine back when he was with Beth Odd, when he was like working for, like when Beth Odd mm-hmm. was like, you're the one that said that we have to go this and you went and attacked them and you did all this. You see like a moment of when that happened. Mm-hmm. And then one of the short stories is also Glockta when he was still young before he got captured by the Gurkish. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's, like, so weird to see, because you keep hearing about what a dick he was, yeah. and how he was, like, so arrogant. Yeah, so it's kind of weird seeing Glockta as that. <laughs> Basically playing Jezel. Is that how you were saying it? Jezel? Yeah. How do you say it? <laughs> Giselle. Giselle? Uh-huh. Why is that more correct? Because that's how the audiobook narrator says it. Oh, I guess that means it's correct. <laughs> Interestingly, and I was just telling somebody else this, um, the, the audio, so, like, it's, it's, like, pretty universally acknowledged that the audiobooks for this series are some of the best audiobooks mm-hmm. of all time ever of any kind. Yeah, you mentioned that. Um, and so he does a lot of voices and accents, and he did a uh, French accent for Pharaoh. And huh. Joe Abercrombie, when he... There was an interview with the two of them, and he was like, I wasn't picturing that when I wrote her the first time, but after hearing Stephen do the French for Pharaoh, he was like, forever after, she was French in my head. <laughs> it's really, because he does, it's not a pretty French accent, it's a very guttural one, mm-hmm. so he's always like, you fucking pink. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty great. It's pretty funny. Yeah, so if you ever decide to give an audiobook a go, these are fantastic on mm-hmm. audiobook. But yeah, so overall, you liked it, and you want to read the standalones, right? Yeah, I'm eager to read the rest of Maybe best served cold. Content in that universe. So I, I don't even know if you know. I know there's, I told you they're standalones, but each one is kind of, they all take place in this universe, obviously, but each one is kind of inspired by a different genre that Joe Abercrombie want to try his hand at, but still within this universe. Hmm. So best served cold was inspired, and he himself, before he was an author, he was a video editor. So he's kind of a film buff. Hmm. So he was inspired by an old revenge thriller called Point Blank. Um, and so he is kind of his, ins- that and Machiavellian politics were kind of an inspiration for Besser Cold. Mm-hmm. That the heroes is based on All Quiet on the Western Front, and Red Country is based on the Western Unforgiven. So those are kind the, of the tones. The trilogy I read. Um, that was just him taking like a traditional fantasy arc and kind of shitting on it. So you've got mm-hmm. like a quest and a wizard and a chosen one, but it's all kind of like the horrible version of that. Feels more realistic, I guess. You have to be realistic. Right. So that was kind of the project, because he read The Song of Ice and Fire, and was like, oh, so fantasy can be like, gritty Mm -hmm. (laughs) like all right let's do it so that was kind of the project of it was to like that's not me suggesting that's what he said he wanted to do was to kind of like take that traditional fantasy but like make it like ugly and gritty Mm -hmm. yeah i was kind of expecting more main characters to die if they're the pov then the then the problem becomes how are you going to show the audience the rest of what happens here if the person you're following is dead but plenty of other people die (laughs) and some main characters die well, one. Only one? West. I mean, of the ones oh. you're following. Well, he doesn't actually die in the book, right? But you're led to believe he's yeah. going to die. Well, then there's Toll and 
uh, ground. True, but I feel like the POV for that is the dog man. So I was thinking of the people whose actual perspectives oh, you've been sure. following, West actually dies. Yeah, I guess but... he is the only one. <laughs> Two of them became kings. <laughs> yeah. Uh... I love that moment when, like, Logan and Giselle are talking now after that's happened. And Logan says something about that. And we're like, we're both, like, fucking kings now. Like, who a couple of losers like us. Yeah, that's <laughs> Logan just trying to be a nice guy. It's not working yeah, out. Yeah. I'm trying that hard to do that, though. You have to be realistic. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the things that I like best about it is that each character, like, every time they talk, every time they do anything, every time they say anything, it's, like, them. Like, recognizably them. Well, and they always go through the same list of complaints in their head. <laughs> So you didn't see it coming with Baez being quite the puppeteer. Not the extent of it, I guess. Valentin Balk. Yeah, I didn't really guess that he was in charge of a bank at all. That was a big surprise. <laughs> the evil banks. They were behind everything. Uh -huh. Also, just how fucking evil at the end when he like locked uh, Yulwe inside and it turns out that he killed Ptolemy. Story was mostly true. He just kind of left out the bits where he's actually the villain. Yeah. And you're like, oh fuck. Like, I've been around you this whole time. You were like low-key the villain. <laughs> I do like the magic being kind of like used very sparingly and still remains kind of mysterious because that kind of mm -hmm. makes it feel more real. Cannibalism being incorporated the way it was. How much do you have to consume in order to hear about Logan drinking blood and stuff? So. That's not eating flesh though, is it? I think I would, I would imagine it's more than just picking up like someone's flesh and eating it. Like I would imagine like part of this magic involves eating flesh and then thereafter you continue eating it. Oh, it might be worth a try. Quite enjoy like the kind of almost like theological debates that they have, especially in the beginning, more in the blade itself when like he's questioning uh, Kwai and Kwai is trying to give answers and failing at it. But when he's like, kind of, that's when you're learning kind of what the first law is. Bias is the one that even says the first law is a paradox because he says you can't touch the other side, but all magic comes from the other side. Mm -hmm. So like the way that like, kind of feels the way that kind of when people talk about, you know, religious stuff, you know, like can God make a something, an object that's too big for God to lift himself? Can he microwave a burrito too hot to eat? What? <laughs> that's the Simpsons version. <laughs> Is there anything like you wish that it would have like given you an answer for or that you would have seen or that you expected and didn't happen? I, I get the feeling Logan died at the end, right? <laughs> uh, overall, it was pretty conclusive in the end, which I like. <laughs> I remember you asking me like, if it, is this going to be a conclusive end? And I was like, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But like... As conclusive as I would have wanted it, I think. I said I don't want a Disney ending. Joe Abercrombie books were ever in danger of having a Disney ending. Yeah. <laughs> like, did you know before you started The Blade itself that it was going to be where, like, everyone's, like, terrible and, like, there aren't really any good guys and, like, it's not, like, it's not like Wheel of Time. I didn't really know what to expect. So were you, like, immediately, like, oh, it's like this, or were you, like, what the fuck? Why is everyone terrible? I didn't think everyone was terrible. just thought everyone was, kind uh, of had their own motivations, I guess. No, nothing, no one really sticks out as a terrible person. Miklant is a torturer. Yeah, he's, he's easily the worst. <laughs> and Giselle is a massive he, dick. He has his, yeah, Giselle is just kind of Giselle is uh, <laughs> cool of himself and selfish, obviously. It is kind of a... I liked it because it seemed like realistic characters. You have to be realistic. <laughs> uh, it is kind of like really fun to me at the end of Last Argument of Kings to see kind of full circles, like to, having seen where Giselle started the blade itself. And then when people like West are like, oh my god, what did... who? Who are you and what did you do with Giselle? You're yeah. acting like a king. And like when you see, it's not unbelievable that he suddenly shifted because when you've seen him shift over time and also you've seen in his head where he's thinking to himself, like, what am I doing? Like, mm. I'm supposed to be kingly. Like, I, I, I'm not anybody. Like, <laughs> you're like yeah. so like, you know, that he's just really coming from him being like, I don't know what I'm doing. But from the outside, it was like, wow, the king. <laughs> no, I like the character development a lot. And him, he's like so useless around Artie. Like the, every time they were together, he was just like, Fuck. He really screwed himself a lot. <laughs> yeah, he did. But then even then when he's like, okay, I know he's gonna marry her, and then Bias is like, you're king now. You're like, he's like, I've made promises. Before that, he gets to be like a colonel or something. Yeah, or? but then when he was like, you know, no, I've made promises, and then when Bias is like, you have, you know, scores of princesses to choose from, and Giselle's like, well, I gotta do that, though. It's <laughs> like, what can I say? Like, that's just what I have to do now. Yeah. <laughs> and then he marries, like, the prettiest one of all, and she's like a massive cunt to him. <laughs> and mm -hmm. he's like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Especially when he's like getting up for it and he's like, oh, she's like into me. Like, this is not be so bad. And she's like, don't touch me. And he's yeah. like, oh, fuck. And by the end, because they were always like at each other's throats, but by the end, it is so funny to me 
watching Pharaoh and Baez when Pharaoh was like, what's this? And he's like, you really are the worst, aren't you? And she's like, tell me now. <laughs> he's like, is it, would it kill you to be nice? Like, I don't owe you anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love their interactions at the end. She's had it and she's he's had patience, it. Yeah. Well, Baez has lost patience too. And he's like, I'm not putting up with this from you anymore. And she's like, give me. Yeah, I'm still a little very confused about all the ancient history. But... Yeah, but I think... Well, I think it's partly one, I mean, it is partly me, I think, that I don't get it, and partly also that it's kind of... It's supposed to be, uh... Yeah, it's kind of mysterious, one, and two, kind of not the point. Mm. Like, the point is the bias is behind everything. However, and whatever weird wizardy thing he does, he's evil, he's behind everything. He's not clearly evil either, though, right? Well, it's like, it's the kind of evil of, like, Ozzy... Yeah, he's, uh... he's trying to prevent worse evil. It's like the, what's his or... name from Watchmen, when, like... Ozzy Mandius. Man Mandius. It's basically he's Baez is like that, where he's like, This is for the good of the people. They don't know what they're doing. Like, I need to do this thing and it sounds oh, evil, it's, but it's funny how he laughs at the idea of democracy. And... Oh yeah. <laughs> they don't <laughs> like, wanna be told. It's like true to bias. But it's also it's like not dissimilar, like honestly, from like what Glockta thinks to himself. Like he's like, I don't you are scary and evil, but I don't super disagree with you. <laughs> I do love that, like uh there's a moment when uh when Glockta like thinks to himself I think it's, I mean, it's in the last argument of kings, and I think it's when, is it after Pharaoh's attacked him? He's ready to die, and he thinks he's gonna die, and then she's, oh yeah, it's Pharaoh, and she's like, why would I kill you? And he's like, maybe the trick is wanting to die. Like, that's yeah. how you survive all of this, because every time he's like, okay, this is how I die, and I still didn't die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that too, and Baez points it out, and he's like, you know, you have this like horrible, miserable existence, but you just keep fighting to live, yeah. and he's like, I just refuse to lose. Too stubborn. I was sad about Frost and Severard. I was about to ask that too. I was like, that kind of like Loki made me sad. I was like, because they were such a trio and getting um, to, and like, as far as it went, they were good helpers. Yeah. Until they, you know, turned on him. Seemed like Frost's uh, turning was a little more malicious, but. But he also didn't seem like to have, like, Severard kind of had a good rapport with Glockta. Like, mm -hmm. they were kind of right. joking with each other. They really had a time. conversation with Frost. Yeah. But then it was funny that I guess he had beautiful handwriting, so he made oh, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I loved all the times so, with, like, every time Glockta was, like, torturing and questioning someone, and you're like, will you confess? And they're like, I didn't do anything. He's like, that's not what I asked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, I feel you so hard. I'm always asking questions, and people say something different, and I'm like, that's not what I asked. <laughs> Glockta's my spirit animal. <laughs> And all, I feel like anyone that's been frustrated with, like, a boss at work has been glocked in his mind when his boss, like, asks some stupid question and you know you can't give him the answer that you want. And in his mind, he's, like, ranting and raving at them for being nincompoops and, like, whatever, but out loud, he's just like, oh, yes, oh, yes, sir, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Like, one of my favorites is, like, when he comes back from Gurkel. Is he from Gurkel? From, from Dagoska. Dagoska. Um, when, uh, after he, you know, basically achieved the impossible, and he's like, so how did you get all this done? And it's like a whole paragraph of him being like, I did this and I did this and I did this. And out loud, he's just like rising early. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that was interesting how he even organized the re rebellion mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, like when the leader of the rebels has so... two colored eyes and you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, that's right. He did. Yep. And immediately as soon as Bias shows up, he's like, well, I guess we'll just surrender then. <laughs> Giselle's yeah. like, what? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I recommend you tell them this was a tough negotiation. And he's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Just all so useless and stupid sometimes. Yeah. Like, I didn't do it. And then, like, when he thinks he's doing the right thing, he's like, yeah, he charges into battle and bias. He's like, you're so stupid. Don't yeah. ever put your life in danger. <laughs> he's like, but I was trying to be heroic. And he's like, that's useless. <laughs> you need to have a reputation for being heroic. Don't actually do anything heroic. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I was trying. <laughs> There was something else like that. Oh, like when Baez kind of praises him for like putting people in their place until he starts doing it to Baez. And Baez yeah. is like, oh, no, 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 you don't do it to me. Yeah. <laughs> and I did really love like in the middle when uh, they were still on the quest that like Giselle was like kind of coming around to Logan and like being like, mm. maybe he's not the useless lump that I thought he was. Yeah. Well, you really like somebody, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that moment. Because he hasn't, I mean, even though like you can tell he's kind of changed his mind about Logan, he's never really come out and said anything positive about him until at the end when Logan says something about him, I'm a horrible man and Giselle's like you're the best man I know yeah, and you're like oh <laughs> you're like yeah I guess after all you've been through Logan's kind of the only like not cuckoo crazy one mm -hmm. <laughs> so are you excited to see all their children in uh, the new I trilogy so, yeah. I know I keep saying I'm probably overhyped it now and now you'll be like well it was good but it wasn't that good but like shivers <laughs> fucking love shivers I was wondering um as a brother what you thought of West and Artie well I didn't Spend too much time together. In the first book they did. 
Because she's yeah. living with him. I don't know. He was a protective guy. And... Until he became the threat. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I just, whenever there's a brother-sister relationship, I can't help but think, place myself more in that situation hmm. because it's one that I can identify with more than, like, say, a sister-sister relationship. I'm like, I don't really know what it's like to have a sister. Mm -hmm. I can think of, like, I mean, a close friend, but it's not the same from a brother's perspective. Because, like, obviously I would be thinking more of Artie and, like, what if, like, I had an abusive father and, like, would I blame my brother if he didn't, like, do anything about it, etc., etc. I don't know. If you were, like, putting yourself in mm, West's shoes. Not so much. I don't think you'd be like West. <laughs> Although you can be pretty good serious. Well, I don't think you'd beat me. <laughs> so I think that's oh, good. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> I did like when the Northmen started calling him Furious. Yeah. <laughs> like, Furious! Right. Yeah! <laughs> mm -hmm. That in general, like, I love when the Northmen, like, first show up to, like, help out the Union Army and, like... <laughs> They're like, you guys picked the dumbest one of you to be the leader. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not dying for this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All that bitching that Ladislaw does. Like, you're like, you are so... How could you be this useless? <laughs> <laughs> and all his, his pal uh, just telling him to do... Oh, yeah. And you're like, that's the life. way, Wes. That's what we have to do. <laughs> like, yeah. go charging in. <laughs> oh, boy. Good show. I love how West takes care of the two generals or whatever that are under him now and Polar tells and Croy. yeah when he tells them they're, he, that he's siding with the other one mm -hmm. that was that was like, I, like, I enjoyed that a lot and pike as a character when he shows up and like now you know it's kind of saved by the Salem army Ruth. but just in general even before that reveal it makes like, the world feel a bit smaller though when everyone's a friend of everyone i guess for that reason it also doesn't bother me when things are like quote unquote left hanging because like then it doesn't it doesn't it isn't realistic for things always to be wrapped up no. so like the shanka or like uh, yeah, it concluded enough things to be satisfying, but mm -hmm. not like too many to where it's unbelievable. Thought it was weird that he was that West could choose him as such a high-ranked officer. In times and, of war, you know, they weren't exactly checking, doing background checks on anybody. I mean, just even West rising to power when he's like, Haha, "Giselle's king, and I'm in power." Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure, why not? <laughs> Even like all the like like throughout as after Giselle's king and you like when you like periodically see some character that knew him from before and they're like yeah no wonder he acted better than us all along like turns out he was king. Yeah. <laughs> but I do love the doddering kind of old fool that Bias plays mm -hmm. like, until he's very much not. I thought it was funny in the first book how he wears the performance robes to forget to oh, get people they, uh, to bully of him. Well like when they all of them they stop at the costume store and Logan has to dress mm -hmm. like a barbarian. Right. <laughs> it's like <Yeah>. what? <laughs> I think doesn't Baez, because like Logan is super confused about everything, and Baez like tells the store owner, he's like, oh, he's very method. Like, yeah. he's a method actor, he's right. like really trying that to live the part. <laughs> 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 I was like, I was, if I, there was one like, I guess, weakness, I would say, like, I'm kind of surprised, and I wish we had had a perspective from Artie. Like, it feels weird that we didn't. Yeah. Because she's, like, an equally main character. I think like Pharaoh's the only female perspective, right? Yeah. And, like, we see just as much of Artie, pretty much, as we do of the others. And you could say, like, oh, it's because she's already in the situation with Glockta. But we had crossover with Giselle and Logan and Pharaoh all in the same place. Of cross. Well, did you find it? I mean, because, like, some books are, like, kind of, you know, harder, like, a harder writing style to, like, read. And others are, like, really easy to just, like, keep reading. Like, mm -hmm. Red Rising, you knocked out in, like, one day. Yeah. You, like, texted me, you were like, this is just a trilogy, right? Because I stayed up till four reading Red Rising. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't do this. Yeah, that one kept me going. So was this the kind of book where you felt, like, or these books were, like, where you, like, kept wanting to keep going? Uh, it was easy to take a break, I'd say. But um, I was also continuously interested to learn more. It was pretty easy to read. My main issue usually is that when there's a lot of descriptive stuff, I kind of zone out and then have to reread a bunch of stuff. But, uh... There's not like, a whole, terribly much yeah, description. Yeah, I agree. But I'm saying that and that's not really an issue for this book, so... In fact, one of the things he kind of does is, like, you don't really see anything described unless it's new to the character. So, like, the first time the Agriant is really described is when Logan comes mm. there and he's like, Why is everything so big? Yeah. When he's like, goes to the fountain and doesn't know why there's a fountain. I think that's when Giselle first sees him. He's like, What is this idiot doing with the fountain? Yeah. He's like, Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I'd, tend, I'd start zoning out sometimes when perspective would shift to another character, just because I kind of, uh, I get a little annoyed, but it's, it is ultimately good to get all the different perspectives. <laughs> right, yeah, I thought so. I'd, but I just get interested and invested in one character, and then yeah. something interesting happens. Oh, now it's Pharaoh time. Pharaoh time! Pharaoh. <laughs> I feel like perspective shifts bothered me more in um, A Song of Ice and Fire than in these books. 
Yeah. Well, there. Were, I remember reading that, and there were particular characters that I had very little like interest Daenerys. in. Yeah, and her, all her stuff was completely unrelated to anything going yeah. on. I guess later, several books later, it matters, but. At first, in the blade itself, that's kind of how I felt about Pharaoh because she seemed mm. the most disconnected from what was going I on. I felt like that about pretty much everyone at first. But I guess more so just because, like, I mean, Baez and Logan and everybody are together, and I know kind of what yeah, they're going on. She and was why. particularly. But Pharaoh, you're like, you're on the road, some random person. Like, how mm. are you connected to any of this? Yeah, because she was still kind of disconnected when the others started meeting, yeah. I think. Yeah. And, like, you weren't introduced to her in the beginning. Like, you were introduced to her right around the time everyone else starts kind of making sense. And yeah. you're like, who is this motherfucker? <laughs> why do I care? <laughs> Just a bitch. Pretty, like, funny bitch, yeah. but, like, why? Uh, upon reread, like, doesn't bother you because you know where this is going, mm -hmm. but the later books, when he writes it, there is no, like, oh, first time through seems that way. Like, he's nailed it where, like, first time through everything is, like, great. Purposeful. Or even, because, like, even in, it's not to say, like, oh, well, now everything is predictable. It's, like, you still don't know where things are going, mm -hmm. but it's just, like, structured in a way where you're not so, like, what was the point of any of that? In fact, Best Served Cold is probably the one that's most tightly plotted because, like, it's mirrored after, like, a revenge thriller. So like it's a tight plot. We know what we're doing. We're getting Is that the revenge. First, uh... No, it's the standalone. Oh. It's a standalone. So that you like you don't have three books to do this. It's just the one, and you know this plot. You know whatever happens, seven men must die, and so we are going through it. Like right. we have a like that's the revenge. Oh. Like there there are seven people she holds responsible for like what she wants revenge for, and so like that's the plot. Is killing? No, it's a new character. Mm -hmm. like, this is a character that like I notice her being <clears throat> mentioned. In the trilogy, just because I've read Best Serve Cold, she's hardly mentioned. But they called her the Snake of Talons. So, oh, like, no. yeah, you wouldn't. Like, unless you've read Best Serve Cold, you're like, oh, they're talking about Moscato and Mercado. And I think uh, Casca mentions her, Mercado, mm. because Casca knows her. That's why he's in the next book. So, um, she's, so this is in Talons, which is where um, the queen is from. Yeah, there's no map, is there? No, there's no map. No, there's really, I looked up, uh, I think it was probably fan made or something. But yeah, so Talons, that's where Queen Therese is from. No. You sure about that? Yeah. Two four so of talons. Oh, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> but anyways, so like that's basically the plot of Best of Cold is that Monscaro Mercado, the snake of talons, someone tries to kill her and she does kill her brother. And so now she needs to get revenge because she survives, obviously. So she gets a crew together to try to kill the seven men she holds responsible for having done this. That's about the length of Last, uh, last Argument of Kings. You're in the middle of it? No, Dad was reading it. Never finished. He does that. I know. I was about to say, you know how he is. <laughs> just randomly stops. Mm -hmm. And you'll ask him if he didn't like it. He's like, no, I liked it. <laughs> Why'd you stop? <laughs> the new trilogy has Glockta's daughter and Giselle's son and the dog man's daughter. Giselle's son with Therese? Yeah. He doesn't have a romantic thing with. He does. <laughs> And then, like, I only just realized, like, I feel like a fake fan on this reread of the trilogy, because um, one of the main characters, so Rika is the dog man's daughter, and the person, there's this older woman who's, like, kind of, like, helping her, um, and, like, is around her, uh, is starting to fail. And, like, I, she's, like, one of the main prominent characters, so, like, I definitely mm. knew the name is starting to fail, but I never really noticed. The one who keeps saying you're beloved of the moon. Crumb. Crumb. Crumaki, yeah, Crumaki fail. So okay. it's starting his daughter, the one with the oh. axe, who's like, I'm your daughter! <laughs> like, okay. she's this older woman. Yeah, without seeing it on paper, the name didn't stick yeah. out to me. So, like, I, because that's, like, all she is in the trilogy. She shows up, she's like, oh, I'm your daughter! And he's like, oh, yeah, of course you are. Yeah. And then, like, I know her very well now as a, an adult, as, like, an older woman who's in the new mm. trilogy, because she's always around and giving advice, and she's always saying things about being beloved of the moon. And I was like, oh, that was that thing from before. I was like, oh, that's his daughter! <laughs> so it's a lot of little things like that, where, like, the big ones you obviously know. It's like, obviously Sabine Dan Glock, like, no one is missing that. But there's, like, a lot of little characters that kind of pop up and weave in and out of the books, and you're like, that person. It's a very small world, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, it's a you're gonna follow someone in this world, so you may mm. as well follow, follow someone you know. They're bound to meet all of your friends. Well, there's also like where there's I mean, people congregate where there's power. So, like, if yeah. you come from a powerful family, history repeats itself. We learned that in Star Wars, right? <laughs> but also, I mean, like, if you study like history, it's always these powerful families in and out of power and always like intermarrying or like ba backstabbing each other. Sure. Are you excited to see Papa Galacta? <laughs> not gonna be playing catch with his son or daughter he won't be playing catch with his son either because he doesn't have one <laughs> how do you think he's gonna be as a father do you think you'd like to have Glockta as your father hell no <laughs> why not you'd certainly be well protected 
He has a certain way of getting what he wants. Which, uh, <laughs> you think he'd torture you? <laughs> wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. As so many people kept telling Lockdown, he's got a heart. He wouldn't do that. I think I know better after reading his thoughts. <laughs> But he did let, um... Yeah, no, he has a self fighter. And it was funny, Lynn, when he did that, it's like, God damn it, why did I do nothing? Nothing good comes from doing something nice. Why won't I learn? <laughs> Should have killed her! <laughs> yeah, I was cringing when he first yeah. made that decision. That's bound to come back. And it did. I love that. Oh, that was like the phrase that comes back for Glock a lot too, with body found floating by the docks. <laughs> yeah. And yet he's still alive, like Logan yeah. would say. Well, the more he said stuff like that, the more I knew he's going to be totally fine. <laughs> well, he's far from fine, even when we begin the book. <laughs> he's yeah, going to be alive. Sure. It doesn't get much worse, though. Yeah, just death. And for him, that would be a release. <laughs> no, I love it how he's always... How do, you, how do you think you can threaten me? I'm not... <laughs> I love his little monologue about men and nipples. And you're like, hey, you don't think about them. You don't really need them. Yeah. But I promise you, like, I don't miss mine. <laughs> well, he purposely smiles at people when he wants to put them off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was in the beginning of the first book, so I don't know if you'd remember, but I still love his little rhyme about porridge when he's like in a particularly feisty mood because he hates porridge, but it's like all he can eat. And he's like, porridge mm -hmm. and honey, better than money. Everything's funny when you porridge and honey. <laughs> <laughs> and it's even though like you're, it's. It's like the twisted version of Marvel, that like excitement you get when you're like, Captain America meets Iron Man, and, like they're coming together. So like those mm -hmm. moments throughout the books where like, when you see like Galacta meeting Logan, meeting mm -hmm. like, it's fun. Yeah, it's always exciting. And also seeing them like, because if you've been following Galacta, then like the first time then you see Galacta through someone else's eyes because it's their perspective now telling you, like when Giselle sees me like, who's this crippled old fuck? Like, ugh, I don't want to get away from him. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Galacta's like, Giselle's so useless. Was I like that? I probably was like that. God, I hate myself. Yeah. <laughs> I do love that little pep talk he gives Giselle. Because he was, yeah. like, when uh, Marshall Brews wants, like, him to, like, pep Giselle up to actually take the contest seriously. And mm -hmm. Glockta has a little conversation with Giselle. And Giselle's like, oh, fuck. And he's like, you know, I used to be like you, but, you know, why don't you quit if you don't want to be doing this? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. But I think it's shortly after that that he talks to West and finds out that West was his friend all along. Yes. <laughs> Very sad. I mean, it's up, like happy also to find out that he mm -hmm. was a good friend, but also <clears throat> sad, and you're just like, oh, I was all bitter at you, but yeah. you were my friend, and I wish I'd known all this time. Might be a slightly you. less bitter guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then I like that he kind of ended up, he, so he couldn't really have a friendship with Wes because he was leaving, but he kind of got that friendship with Artie then, because she was like, she'd always known him, so she mm -hmm. wasn't super put off by seeing him. She's like, whatever, like, I've seen worse. <laughs> well, she said she was, uh, she wanted him when she saw him in the contest, right? Oh, yeah, well, back when everyone wanted him. I do like when she puts him, like, when he's, like, telling her off for sleeping with Giselle, and she's like, oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you were betting all kinds of ladies back when he was like, yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. Mm -hmm. I definitely was. I was terrible. <laughs> I am the worst. <laughs> and that, too, when he's, like, when that idea that I feel like you see in more, like, noble types fantasy where they're, like, They'll never break. They'll never confess. The whatever. And he's like, of course, I told them everything that I could possibly yeah. think of. Everyone does. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> just make the pain stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I'm glad you liked it. Mm -hmm. You are gonna. So I know you said you kind of wanted to reread the trilogy, but do you? So do you think after you've read everything, then you're gonna want to reread it, or sooner than that? I wasn't uh, sure if you kind of immediately wanted to kind of like skim read to like check on some things that yeah, like or I'll probably revealed. go back or go on to the next stuff. The next stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will say, like, The Heroes was my least favorite, but it is the most unique thing that he's written, I think, insofar as, like... Most unique? Uh, you'd get on me for that? Oh, yeah, I can't. Because, uh, basically, The Heroes is just, like, several days of one battle told from multiple perspectives. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's the whole plot. Yeah, I didn't like the battle scenes. I feel like, in general, like, I mean, I think he writes them very well, but just in general, my capacity to pay attention to battle scenes is quite small. Yeah, so, I like, he does a good a job. Bit. It's just, like, that's not my favorite. I think uh, other authors do battle scenes better, but, yeah, it's definitely not a problem. Well, I feel like battles are cooler visually. Like, it's harder to picture mm -hmm. it all when I'm reading it. So, like, I have actually that problem with Red Rising a lot, too. There's a lot of space battles, and I'm like, oh, I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> I know there's a lot of stuff happening. There's no space battles in the first one. Well, yeah. 
but... It's all like medieval stuff. Yeah, yeah, but there's a lot of space battles throughout the rest of the series. And I'm always like, I'm sure whatever you're doing is real impressive, but I don't know what it is exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of people are dying, I get that. <laughs> but anyway, so the heroes, like, I just say that because, like, the project of it, I respect it. And I think it's kind of, in like, what he's doing there, like, I see what he's doing. And, like, as a, as a writing project, like, it's cool to see mm -hmm. him execute it. But just as a story, like, because it, it literally is just several days of battle. Like, I get that was the point of this, but also I'm like, what's the point of this? <laughs> like, I know your book's just like... tell me the result. And it is good. I was just like, Abercrombie books, people already complain. They're like, where is any of this going? What was the point of any of that? And when I read the heroes, I was like, okay, but literally though, what was the point of any of that? <laughs> so just like, I would still read it, but like, don't just go and be ready for that. So you're not going to take a break and read Red Rising? You're just going to plow right through the world of the first law? I figure I might as well while it's still fresh on? in my mind. I won't disagree. Because I, I figure I need to reread Red Rising before I move on to the next true, true. one. Do you think you'll catch up by the time the new book comes out? How many books do I have to read? There's three standalones, then the short book that has the short stories in it, and then the new trilogy has two out. So you like said September? Five whole books and short stories, yeah. That's pretty doable. I did three books in two months, right? Yeah. So we can buddy read the Wisdom of Crowds. What is the buddy read? And then you I can come on I'll my channel and talk about Wisdom of Crowds. Yeah, we can record a Zoom call, right? We can do a live show. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Very comforted that much of this is likely to be cut. Yeah, like two minutes, I think. Maybe five. Maybe up to five. <laughs> I'm glad you're joking. So thanks for coming on my channel. <laughs> thanks glad for you're having in, me. Glad you're in, enjoying the first law. I've been like genuinely so excited when you like texted about it and we're like, he likes it, he loves it. Yes. Because <laughs> I fucking love these books. Mm -hmm. I'm always excited when someone else loves them. What was dad's opinion? He said he read them yeah, a while it's, back. Yeah, it's good. I really, the usual? I really like them. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll even read half of Besser of Cult. Has <laughs> he ever been enthusiastic about it? <laughs> <laughs> that was Dad. He's pissed off. I heard us talking. I was like, God damn it, I love a lot of books. <laughs> all of these. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, I think we've said nearly all that can be said about the first law. So check back in. Where when you're in town again and we can talk about the standalones and the new trilogy, right? Right? Yeah, yes. let's, let's see how well received this video is. Oh yeah, and I gifted him the wolf, so when he reads that, he can come back on to talk about the wolf. Yep, Red Rising and, and Red Rising. everything else you Oh my gosh, me. yes. Okay, so he'll be back for sure. This will, this will definitely happen. Yeah? If you say so. All right, well, I think that does it. So let me know in the comments down below what you think of the first law. What don't you think forget of our to like and subscribe. Correct. You want to do the outro? No, I don't. <laughs> don't, don't do it for me. <laughs> but if you hit dislike, I guess that means you hate him. No, yeah, please don't do that. Well, let us know all the things. If it's something um, horrible, I'll pass it along. If it's something nice, I won't tell him. <laughs> I can't read the comments myself. You can. Well, he'll respond to your comments possibly if it's interesting enough. So, mm, we'll see. If he didn't reply, it's because he thinks you're boring. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. It's getting worse and worse. <laughs> <laughs> I think that does it. So, bye. <laughs>